Charming when they can be seen, and nearly invisible when in shadow, agents are operative skilled in deception and avoidance, but trained in self-defense and the use of deadly force. Self-reliant and independent, agents devote themselves to personal goals or to various patrons or causes. If you like playing sneaky archer characters but want to add some magic for creative gameplay, this is the build for you. Or if you like to play solo characters on legendary difficulty, it's hard to imagine a class better suited for that challenge than the agent. The combination of the sneak, archery, and illusion skills might be the most potent in the entire game, and with some spell mods, it's also incredibly fun to play. In this guide, we'll go through the following topics. Key mods, race, class, and birth sign, standing stones and religion, attributes and perks, gear, spells, shouts, and transformations, roleplay considerations, and gameplay combos. As always, I've timestamped each section, so feel free to skip around and watch the parts that interest you. I run my game with hundreds of mods, but for this build guide, I'll talk about a few of the key ones here. Classic Classes and Birth Signs Reimagined This mod reintroduces the Oblivion and Morrowind class system back into Skyrim. It presents decisions at the beginning of the game that help direct how you play throughout an entire playthrough. It might seem a bit restrictive compared to Skyrim's vanilla classless system, but I feel like it actually encourages unique and novel playstyles while avoiding the more typical character archetypes. Imperious Races of Skyrim Anision's original racial overhaul mod gives much more weight to your very first roleplay decision. All races now feel unique from a gameplay perspective, as it gives each more pronounced and interesting bonuses that remain relevant and useful throughout an entire playthrough. Ordinator Perks of Skyrim Anai's original perk overhaul mod adds so many new mechanics that it enables playstyles and roleplay mechanics that just were not possible with the vanilla trees. This is a mainstay in all of my playthroughs. Winter Sun, Faiths of Skyrim. Anai's religion overhaul expands roleplay in much the same way that Ordinator expands gameplay. The deities that your character worships can be a major motivator to much of what they do or pursue in the game. This mod adds goals and powerful in-game rewards as you progress. Andromeda, Unique Standing Stones of Skyrim. Anai's full standing stone overhaul gives each stone more novel and interesting abilities. There's also a hidden ability that unlocks when all stones are discovered. This again enables playstyles that were impossible before. Odin and Apocalypse These two spell packages from Anision both refine the vanilla spells and add new novel spells to the game that expand gameplay immensely. Links to all of these mods can be found in the description below. The best races for the agent that I've found are Altmer, Bosmer, Breton, Dunmer, and Khajiit. The Altmer gets a big starting boost to Illusion at plus 10, and the Contingency power has a great amount of utility and is very fun to use. Weapons and armor are 15% weaker, though enchantments on them are 15% stronger. This will nerf his sneak attack damage quite a bit, which is his main means of dealing damage. Also, the lack of a starting sneak bonus can be hard to deal with very early on in a playthrough. The Khajiit and Bosmer both give starting bonuses to most of the physical thief skills, namely archery, lockpicking, pickpocket, and sneak. Of these two, the Khajiit has the best racial abilities, specifically the Prowl ability that grants him unsurpassed mobility while sneaking. The Bosmer gets the ability to tame animals and to eat people, both of which are far too conspicuous for the agent's liking. The Dunmer gets a minor bonus to both Sneak and Illusion, which is a fantastic combo for this class. The racial abilities also fit perfectly. Ancestral Guardian gives 75 points of armor for 120 seconds when you enter combat, which is great because the agent does not use armor. Whispers gives you an awesome agenty task to complete randomly during your play. And Spirit Walk gives you two invulnerable ancestors to fight for you for 45 seconds. Technically, this race fits best with the agent's combat style. In the end, I chose the Breton because, in the province of Skyrim, he's less conspicuous than his elven or beast race counterparts. He also gets a plus 5 boost to both illusion and speech. 
The Illusion Boost here is very useful at low levels, as it will keep mind-altering spells from failing as often until you can perk into them. Finally, the unlockable Shared Ancestry power grants him the racial ability of the target human or elven NPC for 300 seconds. This adds a large gamut of gameplay options to his toolbox and is just perfect for an agent. The agent class focuses on six skills, namely Archery, Illusion, Lockpicking, Pickpocket, Sneak, and Speech. The class ability provided by Classic Classes and Burst Signs Reimagined is Smooth which makes persuasion attempts 20% easier. Of the birth signs provided by Classic Classes and Birth Signs Reimagined, the Thief and the Shadow seem most fitting. The Thief sign would be a solid option for the agent. With this, pickpocketing and lockpicking are both 10% easier. These are major tools for the agent, and this boost will help greatly, particularly early on in the playthrough. However, I chose the Shadow sign for the 10% easier sneaking, at the beginning of a playthrough, stealth can be a major challenge, and this challenge can be greatly mitigated by this buff. For standing stones, the shadow stone gives a movement speed buff in combat and a sneak and sneak attack boost near structures, all of which are quite useful for this build. However, the unlockable power shadow step, which dashes you to a nearby target, is not. Since the agent does not use melee combat, dashing in close for a backstab won't help. The Tower Stone gives the agent a quest to find a hidden cache somewhere in the world, containing highly valuable loot. This is a great choice since it gives him a constant goal or job to perform, with a great reward for completing it. It also allows the agent to bypass locks up to a depth level, and bypass one expert level lock per day. This is less valuable once lockpicking skill is leveled, but definitely useful early on. I ended up taking the Thief Stone and leaving it active for most of my playthrough. It strengthens most pertinent skills and boosts their progression. It also boosts the damage of sneak attacks by 10%, perfect for that sneaky archer paradigm. The unlockable power Pillage rewards you with more loot when you get a kill cam on an enemy, which does happen a lot with a sneaky archer. If you're running the Winter Sun Faiths of Skyrim mod, there are plenty of good choices for deities to worship. Nocturnal is encountered naturally during the Thieves' Guild questline and provides a useful buff to sneak. You can also pray to clear non-violent bounties which you're sure to rack up early on when your pickpocket skill is still low. At devotee status, you can observe the nearest person through any obstacle to scout the next area. Mafala, the Daedric Prince of Deception, is another great choice. Sneak attacks deal more damage based on favor if you attack from behind your enemy. Your sneak and illusion abilities will provide you with many tools that'll make this easy. However, the Shrine Blessing is not as useful for this build, and the Devotee ability provides a way to make enemies fight for you, which will already be provided by many illusion spells. I landed on Clavicus Vile, the Daedric Lord of Pacts. These pacts give the agent a random task to complete for favor. Once Devotee status has been obtained, this favor can be exchanged for perks, which is handy since this build does end up being pretty wide when you end up making full use of all of its skills, and there is no shortage of useful perks. Much like the Tower Stone, this gives the agent something to toil on for his patron entity, with real in-game rewards. The attribute ratio that we'll use for this build is 2 points in Magicka, 1 point in Health, and 2 points in Stamina for every 5 levels. We'll need a decent investment in our Magicka pool to be able to cast illusion spells of increasing strength and cost. Stamina is important for any archer in order to zoom in and slow time via the Eagle Eye perk. Since we'll be heavily leveraging Sneak and have Illusion available in a pinch, conventional defense is much less important. However, there will still be situations where we're forced into open combat, so it'll be a good idea to have a little health to prevent one-shot deaths. As a Sneak Archer, our goal is to one-shot most enemies in the game, so we'll be selecting perks specifically to build towards that. Beyond the obvious mastery perks, you'll want to take all ranks of the long shot perk, which gives a hefty damage boost beyond 50 feet. We'll have a few other gameplay mechanics that help facilitate maintaining this distance, so distance shooting is our best bet with this class. You'll also want to take all ranks of the thread the needle perk, which will ignore up to 50% of the target's armor if they are stationary, adding a good percentage of damage back to your arrows and bolts. While undetected, you'll likely have plenty of opportunity for this buff. Following the same subtree, you'll also want to take the Ambush Predator perk, which gives a big damage boost after you sit still for 6 seconds. 
Again, while undetected, you'll have every opportunity to relax and engage this bonus. The two final perks in this subtree, while strong, are not as necessary. With some help from the Sneak, Pickpocket, and Illusion trees, the agent shouldn't have much difficulty killing any enemy in just a few sneak shots before being detected. The Snipe perk is also much worth taking. It does triple critical damage and double enchantment strength on a target that hasn't been shot in the last 10 seconds. This greatly increases first shot damage. To help support these long range shots, you'll want to take at least one rank in the Steady Hand perk. The second two ranks that slow time are less necessary for this build, as you're trying to hit non-moving characters anyway. Still, if you have perks to spend, this might help you hit those trickier enemies. The Clean Kill perk further adds to that first shot damage, doing an extra 20% to targets at full health. In the same subtree, Hunter's Discipline could be useful, especially early in the game. You're unlikely to run out of arrows, but this will at least help keep a good supply of the higher quality ones. Especially since the agent doesn't use the smithing skill, and so can't craft his own. Finally, there is Lion's Arrow. I found simply casting illusion spells in open combat to be more effective, but there are a few classic classes that use both archery and magic, so if you have the perks to spend, you may as well take this one to expand gameplay. The best illusion spells I found to hook up to this perk are Calm, Command from the Odin Spell Pack, and Discord from the Forgotten Magic Redone Pack. The Wilting perk in the Illusion Tree removes 200 points of armor from targets affected by a Calm spell, resetting your hidden status for another sneak attack and stripping that enemy of their armor rating before that next shot. The Command spell from Odin basically turns the target into an ally and the effect is not broken when they are attacked. So once affected, you can land as many sneak shots on that enemy as needed with no repercussion. And the Discord spell, which is basically an upgradable frenzy effect, has a large splash area, can cause magic damage, and level progression for the spell will be awarded with each shot. The agent prefers to stay hidden if possible, but sometimes the enemy will get the drop on you. With no armor and no melee skill, the agent may seem like a sitting duck. But with the illusion skill, the agent can quickly turn the tides of any battle. Beyond the obvious mastery perks, you'll also want to grab the illusion dual casting perk. This will give you some extra power for manipulating stronger enemies, but also enable adding spells to your bow shots via Lion's Arrow. The Entice Barter perk is actually really underrated for one reason. Non-vendor skilled trainers can now be traded with in order to earn your money back. Simply cast Calm on them once you're done training, and sell them all of your loot. Imposing Presence is also an important perk. It increases the affected target level by 25%, making it less likely that a Calm or Command spell will fail when you need it most. Wilting was mentioned in the archery section in conjunction with the Calm spell hooked up to Lion's Arrow. In combat, shooting an arrow at an enemy will also calm them, resetting detection status with that enemy, and removing 200 points of their armor. This is a ridiculously powerful combo. The Silent Storm perk is absolutely necessary. Taking both ranks will make all of your spells and shouts silent, allowing you to stay hidden when those are cast. Finally, you'll need to get Master of the Mind. This is another necessary perk. It extends the effects of mind-altering spells to all undead and non-living targets, including Draugr and Dwarven Automata. In the process, you'll also get the Fickle Fate perk, which randomly increases the target level these spells work on. While the lockpicking tree is vastly improved in Ordinator, I didn't find anything here that the agent would want to take advantage of aside from the vanilla-flavored perks. Namely, beyond the mastery perks, you'll want to take the whole rightmost subtree, starting with Wax Key, and ending with seen this before. This will help you get into and out of locked buildings and chests more quickly and efficiently. The Automata hacking subtree is cool, but it's very situational and your illusion spells will eventually be more effective anyway. And the bear trap subtree is amazing, but unnecessary given the agent's already large and powerful toolset. It can be a fun way to expand gameplay for your agent, however, and to get more use out of this tree. So, if you have some perks to spend, by all means, feel free to grab these. Pickpocketing became one of my go-to skills for this class, with Ordinator adding in some playstyle-defining perks that I ended up using frequently. Beyond the mastery perks, you'll want to follow the leftmost subtree up to Trickster. This perk allows you to pickpocket equipped weapons, giving you a huge advantage if the target then discovers you. One of my favorite perks in this entire build is Death's Emperor. This perk gives you a Death's Emperor coin in your inventory. At two ranks, when you reverse pickpocket this coin into a target's inventory, attacks against them will be twice as strong as well as critical. Following that same subtree, you'll want to grab the Mutiny perk as well. This gives you a power that frenzies the carrier of the Death's Emperor coin. 
However, unlike the Fury spell, this aggressive action cannot be traced back to you. Finally, make sure you take the Dragon Horde perk at level 100. This allows you to buy perks for 50,000 septums each time you sleep. This is the equivalent of wishing for more wishes, and is OP as AF. The Sneak Tree might be the most important for this build. The agent has many tools, but they are all much less effective if he can't stay hidden. One goal for this skill is to add power to our sneak shots. With that in mind, you'll want to take the Sneak Attack perk, which buffs damage by 25%. You'll also want to grab the Problem Solver perk, which can add up to an additional 50% boost to sneak attack damage. The next concern we'll want to address with the Sneak Tree is staying hidden while we're close to enemy forces. This will make it easier to remain undetected while getting in close for a pickpocket attempt. Fog of War boosts your sneakiness while partially detected, and boosts it even more so while enemies are fighting each other due to a frenzy spell or something similar. Right behind you makes you harder to detect the closer you get to an enemy. And Behind Enemy Lines gives you an increasing buff to sneak for each enemy that is near you. This is perfect for infiltrating groups of enemies in order to pilfer their goods or plant stolen contraband. The agent uses the speech skill for persuasion, bribery, and better prices while haggling with vendors. The bribery perk can be very useful for staying out of jail, especially if the thieves guild has not yet gained influence in the hold. The leftmost subtree is also worth taking all the way up to trade prince at level 90. These perks all allow you to earn more gold faster by selling your often stolen loot for higher prices and buying necessities like arrows, bolts, and potions at steep discounts. With no crafting expertise and with the pickpocket ability to buy perks late in the game, gold is more useful to the agent than any other class. Finally, as Dragonborn, you can leverage the Shout subtree for this skill, starting with And the Universe Listens. If you find yourself using shouts often, every perk in this subtree is worth taking. These perks will basically make your shouts stronger and allow you to use them more frequently. The agent does not use armor, so will be limited to jewelry and clothing to dress this class. He also only uses bows as weapons, so we'll limit our discussions of arms to those. Since the agent doesn't make use of any of the crafting skills, he's limited to equipment that he finds in the field or can buy from vendors. A high-level, well-perked speech skill will help with the purchasing part, but there are also a few good pieces of equipment that you can find statically placed in the world. First, we'll take a look at some clothing options. The shrouded hood, shoes, and hand wraps are available as soon as you have access to the Dark Brotherhood Sanctuary, which is easy at any level. The shrouded shoes give a muffle effect of 50%, making you half as noisy while sneaking. There are better solutions for applying the muffle effect, but this is a great start early in the game. The shrouded hood buffs the sneak skill by 25 points, obviously quite useful. The shrouded hand wraps give a boost to sneak attacks with melee weapons. This is useless for the agent as a pure archer, but they just look really cool for this type of unarmored character, so I thought I'd just throw it in there. If you're running the unofficial patch, you can also find a circlet that fortifies archery on the tree stump outside of Froki's shack in the rift. Robes of Illusion can be purchased from wizards and clothing vendors across Skyrim. They are leveled from novice to master, each having a stronger enchantment to reduce the cost of illusion spells. All levels of these robes regenerate Magico 150% faster. The Amulet of Articulation will give the player a boost to Persuasion as well as the Speechcraft skill. Perfect for convincing NPCs to do various things and getting better prices from vendors. You may also want to grab a Ring of Fortified Pickpocket. It always helps to have a little extra pickpocket skill for those really valuable items, especially early in the game before your skill is fleshed out. Now let's take a look at some available weapons. First up is the Skull of Corruption. The vanilla version of this staff does 15 points of non-elemental magic damage. If you charge it up by casting it on a sleeping target, it then does 40 points of non-elemental magic damage in a 15-foot radius. It has 75 uses before it needs to be recharged. The Zim's Immersive Artifacts version of the staff has a simple unleveled fear effect and it consumes dreams instead of a generic charge. Cast it on a sleeping target to store dreams for later use. Having access to an unleveled fear spell is very useful for when you've gotten in over your head, especially at lower levels when your illusion spells are less powerful. Next up is Ferenial's End. This unleveled, unique bow is available some ways into the Dark Brotherhood questline. If you're careful and sneaky enough, you should be able to get to this point without too much trouble. 
It's an elven bow, which is great at low levels. It also carries with it a decent enchantment of 20 points of frost damage. The biggest issue is that it has a very low number of charges, so you'll be eating through soul gems fairly quickly. Next, we'll be looking at the Nightingale Bow. This leveled, unique bow is one of the best in the game. It can be acquired toward the end of the Thieves Guild quest line, so there is a significant time investment in procuring it. This bow is leveled, so the earlier you get it, the weaker it'll be. Up to level 18, the bow has a base damage of 12. The enchantment will include 10 points of frost damage, 5 points of shock damage, and 50 points of slow for 3 seconds. And the charge will last for 26 uses. At level 46, the bow will have a base damage of 19. The enchantment will include 30 points of frost damage, 15 points of shock damage, and 40 points of slow for 3 seconds. And the charge will last for 44 uses. So, unless you're running an artifact overhaul that de-levels this bow, it's very much worth it to wait until level 46 before obtaining it. I personally am running Zim's Immersive Artifacts, which unlevels the bow. It now has a base damage of 19 at all levels, along with an enchantment of 15 points of frost and shock damage, 2 times sneak attack damage, and a charge level of 120 uses. An amazing bow for this class. And finally, we have the Bow of Shadows. If you have this Creation Club content installed, either individually or through the full AE upgrade, you'll have access to the best official bow in the game. Simply speak to the steward in Whiterun to launch the quest for this weapon. At any level, it will do 19 points of base damage, putting it on par with the Daedric and Nightingale bows. Its enchantment gives a 20% faster draw speed and provides 30 seconds of invisibility every time you unsheathe it. Another fantastic choice for this class. Other honorable mentions for unique bows are Zephyr, the Dwarven Black Bow of Fate, and Ariel's Bow. In my opinion, these bows are better suited for combat archery than the covert sneaky brand of archery that our agent prefers. Crossbows are also a viable option, except that available enchantments and unique pieces will be much more limited compared to bows in the game. Also, they are quest locked behind the Dawnguard faction and so aren't available to everyone. As with everything though, mods can fix this if you'd prefer to use them with this class. Crossbows can ignore 50% of armor and have a bit higher base damage rating from their bow counterparts however, so they can be a great option for sneak shots. Finally, I'd like to mention the Honed Metal mod. It's a great mod, but gives access to very powerful gear improvements that don't require any crafting skill specialization by the player. Having this available to all classes diminishes the unique identity of all classes in my opinion. So, I'd urge you to use it only sparingly to add enchantments to endgame gear to complete the aesthetic for your character. But try not to improve your gear beyond other gear that is available without crafting. Sort of as a makeshift transmogrify mechanic. When you have a few spell pack mods installed, the added options can lead to a bit of decision paralysis. There are many useful spells for the agent in an Inirim install, but I've minimized the list to a few must-haves to save you some headaches. Command is a new spell added by the Odin Skyrim Magic Overhaul mod. I found these spells to be my go-to for times when enemies got the drop on me. It provides the best of both worlds between Frenzy and Calm, as it will turn the target against your enemies but also cause the target not to attack you. I had this ready to go at all times that I wasn't actively lining up a shot with my bow. Crying Eye is a new novice level spell added by Odin. It severely nerfs the target's ability to detect the player while they are sneaking. Sneak is very powerful in Skyrim, but early in the game it can be challenging. This helps mitigate that challenge early on before you gain access to invisibility spells and stronger sneak perks. Ghostwalk is a spell I found myself using constantly in combination with Pickpocket and Archery. It does a great job getting you in and out of Pickpocket range safely. This is useful when trying to make a clean escape or when trying to reverse pickpocket poisons and the death's emperor coin before teleporting away to fire a sneak shot for added damage. The vanilla calm spell does offer some utility beyond the command spell from Odin, which earned it a permanent spot in my favorites menu. First, NPCs under the calm effect could still be pickpocketed with no violent repercussions. NPCs under the command spell cannot be pickpocketed. Also, with the Entice Barter perk in the Illusion Tree, any NPC under the Calm spell can be bartered with as a vendor. This doesn't work with the Command spell. Finally, with the Wilting perk in the Illusion Tree, NPCs under a Calm effect lose a big chunk of armor rating, leaving them open to more sneak attack damage. Expose Weakness is another spell added by the Odin spell pack. 
Enemies affected by this spell take 20% extra damage from the next sneak attack. Since its range is limited, this works great in conjunction with Ghost Walk. Also added by Odin, Shadow Weave is a master level spell that gives the player invisibility for a scaled amount of time. However, when the invisibility is broken, it is immediately regained for the rest of its duration. This is great for when you smell an ambush or a dragon battle, giving you access to repeated sneak attacks without being detected. Careful with this one though, because it can be completely game breaking if you use it all the time. Since the game launched in 2011, the Aura Whisper Shout has been a loyal companion to the Sneak Archer. A single loss word is all you need to reveal enemy positions in a wide radius. Another staple since 2011, Become Ethereal turns you invincible for a small amount of time. This is useful for jumping down mountainsides and for allowing you to escape hairy combat situations. With no talent in melee skills or armor, I found this shout to be a necessity. True Shot is added by the Thunder Child, Epic Shouts, and Immersion mod. I only ever use the first word, which strengthens your next bow shot based on distance. This helped to enable that one-shot kill against tougher enemies. And now, a quick word about vampirism. With the Sacrosanct mod, vampires get boosts to sneak and illusion skills, perfect for this build. It also gives a number of special abilities of varying usefulness to this class. One such ability that I really enjoyed was Nightwalk, which transforms you into mist so you can roam about and lets you either return or teleport to that current location. For roleplay, your first order of business is to identify who or what the agent serves. It really can be any entity in the game. That is, a deity, a faction, a single NPC, or even an idea. This is fairly necessary because the very definition of agent from Merriam-Webster is one who is authorized to act for or in the place of another. Once this is determined, you can start to structure your playthrough around gameplay mechanics that support this entity. I really like using the religions and deities from the Winter Sun mod for this entity. There is plenty of lore to support a deep roleplay and various rewards in the form of gameplay mechanics that can be very relevant to the build and the playthrough. This entity can literally be anything, but I landed on Clavicus Vile, the Daedric Lord of Pacts. These pacts give the agent a task to complete for favor. Once devotee status is obtained, this favor can be exchanged for perks, which is handy since the build does end up being pretty wide when you end up making full use of all of its skills, and there is no shortage of useful perks. I also found it fun to make use of disguises with the agent. I didn't go as far as to use a, a mod like Master of Disguise to help flesh this concept out, but you may choose to. I made sure to always have some commoner garb as well as a pickaxe and wood axe on hand to pose as a laborer or merchant while gathering intelligence on a job. Now for my favorite part of every build, the gameplay combos. These combine various mechanics in creative ways and often make for a very effective tool in-game. They can be fun and useful to try in your own play. The first combo is one I like to call stacking the deck. First find a nice vantage of your target with a clear line of fire and cast Ghost Walk. Now you can invisibly approach your target and initiate a pickpocket attempt. At this time, give them the Death's Emperor token and any poisons you may have to weaken the enemy. When you close the inventory screen, you'll be teleported back to the spot where you originally cast Ghost Walk. Now just take aim and fire a long range sneak shot at the still hapless enemy. Always remember to visit the corpse of your target and take back the Death's Emperor coin because it's the only one you get. The next combo is a friendly pat on the back. Perform this by casting the Calm spell on any NPC. Then you can approach and attempt to pickpocket them without a direct repercussion. If you do this in town and are caught, the target will not attack you, but a bounty will be incurred and nearby guards will attempt to arrest you. But if you do this out in the wilderness or in a dungeon or bandit camp somewhere outside of town, no bounty will be incurred and guards will not bother hunting you down. Another combo I made much use of is trading for training. Simply visit a trainer and freely spend ungodly amounts of gold to level up your skills. Don't worry about feeling broke because with the Entice Barter perk, you can simply cast Calm on the trainer and trade them all your valuable loot for those hard-earned septums. The last gameplay combo is called Fish in a Barrel. Find a nice vantage point in the middle of an enemy encampment and cast Ghost Walk. Then head down to where the enemies are congregated and cast the master level Odin spell Propaganda. 
You'll teleport back to your initial location while all affected enemies will line up at attention, ready to defend you. Instead, use your bow to mow them down without repercussion. This is another one to use sparingly as it tends to be very overpowered, breaking the game and making the experience very bland. But it can be fun every now and then. And that does it for another build video. As you can see from my release schedule, these videos take a long time to produce as I really take my time and dig in deep to find the really good stuff to share with you all. If you enjoyed this video and it helped in any way, please do consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. These free clicks do wonders to help the channel. Also, if you'd like to share this somewhere, please do feel free. I'd greatly appreciate it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.